Well, it's been a while, obviously, since we've connected, and um, I've. It's sad that we're we're too far apart these days. You're obviously down in Sydney, and and we're here up on the Gold Coast, and we're always wanting to connect. And it's cool that we at least get to do this podcast and and see see what you're up to. But you've just been what looks from the outside to be flat out. You look like you're doing yes. all sorts. Yeah. Give us a rundown on what your year has been. Definitely, um, yeah, definitely from the inside also is flat out because, <laughs> yeah. wow, like I just felt like COVID obviously put everything on hold. I had heaps of like January. I, I came in with like full momentum, went to the Philippines for a couple of weeks, um, helped like help the national team over there. Just that was with boxing, yeah? Qualifiers. Mm, yeah. yeah, cool. And, um, and so like I got to experience that and that was awesome. And it kind of felt like it kickstarted my travel year. Like I'm so used to traveling everywhere during the year and like racking up those, those flights. And then, um, and I had like opportunities to, to kind of like in talks about a reality TV show and then like little like side hustles and stuff. And, and then, um, and then COVID hit and then like, we're just like lull, um, for a good like six months. And, I mean, like our gyms and everything kind of closed and we had um, just a major, I guess, adapt to, to this new kind of way. And um, and then, of course, on top of that, like I'm from the Gold Coast, so I couldn't come back. And it was just like really strange. Um, but I guess like I was lucky enough that um, I still have my Queensland driver's license. So I got to come at least once yeah, before cool. they got really strict on closing those borders. And um and then yeah, like I was just stayed put in Sydney for probably the longest I've ever been here, like at one time. <laughs> yeah. Um, which is good and bad. Like I got a lot done and I got to obviously work on just like the outside of fighting things, like you work on your house and and like finish yeah, adding in furniture and that kind of stuff and um and work a little bit more, but but yeah, everything got put on hold and then now just recently in the last few months everything's sort of just like come back and kick started because I think we've now kind of realized that COVID doesn't need to kind of restrict us as much as we mm. think. Like mm-hmm. we need to really work around it and adapt to, to keep things going. But yeah, it's been good. Crazy. Crazy. Big year. Yeah, it is, has year. been a big year. Big. You're doing all sorts of crazy things yeah. like le- outside of fighting, like you were saying, so many commercial opportunities and so cool to yeah. see you working with some really massive brands. Um, yeah. I saw you just some behind the scenes of some stuff you were doing recently, which looked so sick. Just like that yeah. next level of sort of commercial opportunity. How was that for an experience? 100%. Are you allowed to talk amazing. about it at all? Or? Um, so I did. So I've done two campaigns for Bose. Yep. Um, that was recently, like in the last few weeks I did. Um, but it wasn't like, it wasn't like they were after me specifically, if that makes sense. Like my brand, they were just after someone that kind of, I guess, looks like me and has the same skill set, yep. yep. um, which was fine because that was like what I wanted to just dabble into the showbiz kind of understanding this whole world and really start working on adding those kind of things to my resume um, for later on. Mm -hmm. And, um, but then luckily enough um, I did those two campaigns and they really loved it. And so now they want to do more on me, like me specifically. Um, So it's kind of cool that um, maybe in the next few weeks we'll be working on some more stuff to add to the things that we already did. Um, but it'll be at my gym and specifically interviewed about me and that kind of stuff. So I was like, that's really cool that I was able to make a good impression, do well on this kind of thing that I have no experience of doing like at all. Like I have no acting experience, no kind of like I've done modeling and that bits and pieces here and there, but nothing majorly professional or anything. And, um, and yeah, now I get to really like create a relationship with this brand, which would be really, really cool. So sick. I want to, um, I want to take it back for sell as well. And obviously the listeners and viewers, but, um, I walked into Puma 11 years ago now, and you were already there and you already had been training in different forms of martial arts. And at the time sort of MMA and boxing and jujitsu for a long time prior to me walking into, into those doors. And I just remember, um, sort of, being on my journey, getting to the point where you sort of get accepted into that next group, that fighters class, and you're in there and you're just smashing all of these guys and you never wanted to be paired up with you because you just knew that your face was just going to get absolutely beaten in that sparring (laughs) session. And um, I would love, obviously, just to bring it back quickly. Um, 
and just share with everyone sort of your experience coming from grassroots on the Gold Coast, um, you know, at Puma, um, which was a, an epic environment at the time. And there were lots of elite guys there all helping you progress. And then to having your first fight now in Bellator and now obviously doing all sorts of crazy things and taking up all these crazy opportunities. Give us a little bit of a rundown about your sort of martial arts history and then we'll, we'll keep going from there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, so I started MMA when I was about 15. I walked into Puma, like you said, um, at the age of 15. And previously I had done karate, Shotokan karate, um, and I'd attained my black belt and it was great. And I'd done a little bit of competition, but like, honestly, like I say this a lot, I wasn't really that good at karate. Like I wasn't that competitive in the, like in the sparring side of things. Um, I was more of like a kata kind of person and, and just like a passive sort of a competitor, I guess. And, um, and then I guess I just, I felt that karate just wasn't challenging enough in a sense. Like it wasn't that, like I had this visual of, I want to become a ninja. Like I want to be like a karate kid. I'm going to be disciplined and just be like a human weapon. It's going to be great. And I mean, I felt sort of more like you pay the money and you get the belt um, with karate, which is fine. And I mean, like even some jujitsu schools are kind of set up like that. But it, and if you do your time, like it's more about um, attendance and that kind of thing. But skill set wise, I wasn't super confident in myself. So I was like, how can I walk around with this black belt? And not really feel that kind of same skill set is matching. Um and it just so happened that my mom was walking around um, the corner of Puma at the time. And uh, she just heard through word of mouth that there was this gym. It was MMA. I was like, I don't even know what MMA is or like what it entails. But I'm assuming that it's just like less uniform and more martial arts. And um, and I walked into Puma um, and Vinny, um, as you guys both know, is a, is a big, big character, um, but super relaxed and and just really welcoming and, and really kind of chilled, especially for like a 15 year old girl, didn't see any girls in sight um, in this gym. So I was a bit unsure as to how I was gonna fit into the whole network of it. And um, and then, yeah, and then I, I he just basically looked at my mom and was like, I would never let her compete unless she was ready. We'll look after her. We'll make sure that she's, um, yeah, you know, like not gonna get injuries or anything stupid. And, um, and basically that was the reason that I, like started and stayed um I don't think I would have maybe had that same approach if I if it wasn't such a welcoming and, and comfortable environment um and then for that reason I just slowly worked my way up uh, I started in the beginners class like you said then back then we had an intermediate class and I was lucky with my background in martial arts that I kind of already had a basic skill set so I moved through pretty quickly and then um and then yeah all of a sudden I was in the fighters class and I was um, trying to kick it with the guys and um, and it was really cool but um, but obviously it had its challenges I was the only female for a very long time I was probably Vinny's first proper competitor female competitor and so yeah we had our hiccups but um, but all in all it, it definitely paved the way for who I am today and, and the skill set that I have now is, is cre- full credit to Vinny and the guys that were there. Did you see yourself at that time thinking further in your life and going I can see myself in the bright lights fighting for a massive organization and could could was that what you sort of envisaged or was this a, 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 a sort of situation where you were training you your skills were progressing and then you were just like ah oh, i should get competitive with this have a, have a fight and then you really enjoyed the fight and then you just kept going 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 and then the opportunity just presents itself or did you sort of envisage this for yourself yeah more the second um one because like honestly i didn't really know what mma was and then back then, I mean, the maximum you could really go, I mean, Strike Force was slowly phasing out, so that wasn't really an option. Invicta was probably the highest, and the UFC didn't have females. So, And it was at that time when Dana was like, females will never be in the UFC. So it was kind of like you couldn't really see, like, a proper pathway. You, you definitely couldn't see a career. Like, it wasn't something that I could um, visualize that I, that I could make something of. And then um, I guess, like, so I just sort of did it as a hobby when I was in school from that 15 to about 17, like late 17 um, year old age. And then once I finished school, it was all on me. It was like, okay, um, my mom was like, oh, obviously I'm not going to pay for your hobbies anymore. You're an adult now. You um, have finished school. You can work. You 
get a full-time job, blah, blah, blah. Um, I had decided that I was possibly going to do communication at university. Um, I had got into university and that was sort of like my career path. That was sort of like the safe, I guess, idea to go for. But um, at the same time, I'm not a citizen. I'm not an Australian citizen. So for that reason, HEX wasn't an option for me. Mm -hmm. So everything had to get paid up front. Um, and then that really um, made the decision a little bit more hesitant. Like I was more like, do I really want to do this and fork out all this money for something that I'm not super passionate about? And I guess um, once I finished school, I sorted out my own car, sorted out a full-time job, got myself back to training. I had maybe like a three, four month layoff, um, just going from that kid to adult stage, I guess. And, um, and then I was like, man, if I put this much effort into just going back to training, because that's obviously what I love to do and was such a big part of my life, especially through my high school years, um, then why don't I just keep investing in this? Like, uh, I really think um, there was a time we had Mark Fior there, mm -hmm. um, a guest coach. Um, he's a USA coach. And uh, he was helping out Benny Alloway and a couple of the boys. Mm -hmm. And um, he basically just used me for an example, like when we we're doing technique. And then I think like straight after the class, he was like, well, do you want to do this as a hobby or a career? And I was like, I don't think anyone's ever asked me that. Like, and I've never really asked myself that question. So I was like, and I guess like more for the pressure, I was just like, oh, a career? Like, I think like I'm, I'm taking this seriously because I am taking it seriously. I always take training seriously. I'm an extremely competitive person. I'm a fairly athletic person. And I was like, wait, maybe I do want to do this as a career. And then I guess for that reason, um, I was just like, okay, well, what do you need to do to put the things in place to start this journey? And then, of course, we all talked about it and they were like, well, we need you to have an amateur fight to see if you're going to, you know, fight or flight and um, see what's going to happen. And um, and I killed it. Like my first MMA fight, I like absolutely killed it. Um, it was second round TKO, I think, or, or maybe a first round TKO. Um, I got the, so there were like fight kind of awards, like fight of the night, finish of the night, some of that kind of thing. But um, there was a rising star award. So it was basically out of, I think about fifth, uh, 16 people on the card. It was like, who do we think is going to have the most potential to become something? And um, I obviously got awarded that. And then for that reason, we were like, okay, I'm killing it. So <laughs> we might as well keep doing it. I love this. I'm constantly at the gym. I'm always training. I'm, I'm really working hard. I'm, I'm a lot younger and obviously I'm a female against all these boys and I'm holding my weight. So, so yeah, let's, let's hit this thing. And then the love just developed more and more as I went across. And then obviously I went through more breaking through barriers of I've got to go from the amateurs to the pros. I've got to go from the pros to the international. I've got to go from the international to the big stage and, and just constantly working out like that. And honestly, it kind of just like, unraveled itself as it went but mm. it was definitely I was like this is what I love to do why not do what I love to do I'm young worst case scenario I'll go back to uni later on in life and um and I'm lucky that I have a family um that supports that idea and, and the guys at the gym really were supportive as well so here we are you just said one thing um then I was gonna ask did you ever feel like you had a plan b on this journey was there a moment in time where you were like why am I doing this and you know it might have been one of those situations where you know, you've got no money, you know, you're scrapping your pennies together to, you know, pay gym fees or whatever it is, you know, recovery, you know, camp costs, whatever. Um, yeah. And you were just like, maybe I should go to uni, back to uni and, and do something. Was there ever that mentality or did you just never have plan B? No, 100%. Like, I mean, at the start it was like, oh, I can always go to uni later yeah. on. But then once I had committed myself and I had literally spent maybe I think um, – it was probably about three or four years by this point I had um had really like all I'd done was work train work train work train and every all my money went into gear all my money went into massages I mean like I bought a car and that was about it but the car was to get to training to get to the fights or whatever it was like everything every decision that I made was about either my brand or my career and then it got to the point um I had done my pro debut I won um first round k uh tko um that went great then my second fight i fought jesse jess on yeah. like yeah. she was six and four i was one and oh so i really realized quickly that i was going to start to fight these guys that were just completely well experienced than me but at the same time i had the skill set to beat um unfortunately in that fight i didn't make weight and back then they deducted points yeah. 
Um, and so that was the decider of who won. It was a 27-28 fight to me. And then obviously with the points, it, they gave it to her. It was like 29-28. Yep. And um, so everyone there knew. I knew. Everyone that's watched the fight knew. It was like, man, like I'm 1-0 against a 6-4 and four who's fought in Invicta. She fought in Japan before me. Like uh, she fought for like three different Australian belts um, and that kind of thing. And I here I am, some kid that barely anyone knew about other than our gym and our close kind of vicinity. And uh, I beat her and I was like, whoa, like, and it wasn't even a great performance by me personally. And obviously typical critique of yourself. Like I, I really could have done a lot better. And um, and then from there I fought Helene Blanco. <laughs> she just fought in Bellator. She um, had come back. She was in between contracts. She would come back to Australia and um she had an original opponent that was coming from Brazil then for whatever reason the visa didn't go through so I took that fight up on I think about two weeks notice um so not only was I fighting someone who had two different world championships in boxing had already fallen Bell at all um I was fighting her on a short notice um and an upper weight division back then I used to fight at bantamweight and we did a catch weight at 64 or 65 or something and um and I got knocked out in the first round and I was just like man like it was straight after that fight that I was like, what are you doing, man? Like, you're either going to – I was looking around me and and honestly there was a few people around me that have been pushing at something that they hadn't completely committed to. And I didn't want to be that guy that was like, yeah, I'm fighting, but I'm really just a journeyman for mm-hmm. these other guys to, to use to um, propel them forward. And I was like, that's not really what I want. And, um, and I was like, if you want to make something of it, then you've got to do something – significant like there has to be some sort of you really want to do this you really want to be successful you have to make be proactive and make the moves to to get there and for that reason I was like you're either going to quit like straight basically straight after that fight that next week I was like you're either going to quit or you're going to move overseas like there's no in between it's 100 or nothing like Mm -hmm. um you go quit and go to uni start living doing the full-time work job I mean at that stage as well I was getting offered like a management salary and stuff like that in my um, health food job. Yep. And so I was like, of course, like I can live off that comfortably. Like I'm an adult now. I'm, um, I was 21 and I was like, yeah, like I need to make this decision. And I was like, no, fuck that. Like that scares the absolute shit out of me. Being a manager in a, like in a retail job, like for some people it's great, I'm sure. But for me being average was just like one of my biggest fears. And, um, and the, even the idea of it really scared me. So I was like, screw this. Like I worked my ass off for, I think like a good three months. I was working like 70 to 80 hours a week, three different jobs, um, hardly training because I was working so much, but I was trying to fit in time here and there. And, um, and yeah, I saved up enough. I sold my car and, um, moved my mom into her own place rather than us always sharing a house. And, um, and I moved to Thailand and lucky for me the universe provided and, and I, um, or everything I intended, um, for the trip really worked out. And I, I ended up linking in with those people that I needed to getting experience I needed to, and, and getting signed to that big promotion. And, and here I am now, like not, not at all regretting the choices that I made, including those fights against those more experienced girls, because that would have probably, I think if I had won those fights easily, I would have been complacent yep. and been like, yeah, like I can meet these girls. I can stay, on the Gold Coast and, and try my best. But honestly, I was running out of opponents and I, I needed something good to project me overseas. And uh, I don't think I would be in the same place I am now. What, uh, what attracted you to Thailand amazing. Out, of all, out of all the places? Because obviously a lot of people go to the States. Um, a lot of people go to Asia. Um, recently, people go to New Zealand with um, the rise of city kickboxing. Was there something about Thailand that you thought was going to be the best situation for yourself personally? I think um, so. The previous year, I had gone over there. Um, I'm not. I hadn't travelled that much back then as well. I'd really only gone to New Australia and New Zealand. Um, that was my first sort of overseas trip. I went to Thailand. I think um, one, you fall in love with the island straight away. Like Phuket is just one of those places that if you go once, you'll definitely go again. At, like at some stage of your life. Um, and then on top of that, obviously, I understood that my money was going to go further. Mm-hmm. The for lifestyle sure. for me was going to um, help my personal journey. I really wanted to become more mindful. I wanted to write more. I wanted to um, do more yoga and like all these little things, um, more like, I guess, a spiritual aspect. Yeah. I had really been potted up on this like 
full-time job all the time, pushing, pushing, pushing. I really wanted to relax all that down and, and create like a more stable kind of mindset for myself that would complement my training and then complement my career in turn. Um, because I really felt like a lot of time when I was working full time, I go to training and hardly absorb any of the information because my brain was already so fatigued from, I guess, just working and, and doing bits and pieces. So um, there was sort of like, it was, it sort of had everything for me. It wasn't just, um, I guess it's like this Island I can scoot around and go to the beach and tan and, and train, but it was more like, I will have a lot more spare time. My money will go further, but I will still, I can still see the massive potential to be able to get that ex- exact same exposure that you'll get in the U S and um, I guess the other thing about the U S is that it's just, there's so many options and so many places to go. Um, having already been to Phuket and having seen both, I, I originally went to Phuket top team the first time I went, but the second time around for the longest stint, I ended up at Tiger. And that was just sort of like how the opportunities sort of align themselves. And um, for me personally, I really love the facility. So due to that, I was just like, okay, this is like a, like a less, less of a gamble, I guess, than going to the U S and also it just made sense for me and my, my lifestyle to, to bring it all down and, and take this break finally. And, um, and lucky enough it worked out. And this is where you met, is that where you met sort of the Ruby guys and then you got management from there. And um, we, you said before about taking the personal <coughs> brand seriously, which was, which was amazing. Um, and something that I think a lot of fighters neglect um, and you see that the ones that focus on their personal brand and see how much further they get all the opportunities that come to them um, as a result of that. Um, did you think about your personal brand prior to going to Thailand or was it some, was it sort of management and things like that that influenced you to, to think further about your personal brand? No, 100%. When I um, went to move over there, that was another goal that I set out to do to really grow my social media mm-hmm. and, um, and work on these other kind of aspects. And the other positive thing was that the... I moved in with two girls. Um, We had all three of us had never met each other. Um, One girl was from Sydney and the other one was from Norway. Um, And we literally met in the house. Like once we got there, we um, luckily she had, one of the girls had friends that had helped us choose our house. We had um, discovered it ourselves and and put our deposit and bond and everything down. Um, But she does social media for a job. So Basically, I just set out the intention to just rack her brain as much as possible nice. of like how to navigate my social media, how, um, how like even back then I didn't even think I knew how to edit photos, like um, like just like with presets, like I like something as basic as that, um, just to come continue on like some sort of consistent theme, um, and that, and make it aesthetic and that kind of stuff. These were just all little things that I had intended to work on. And then um, obviously from there, I had been sponsored by Tiger for the training side of things. Mm -hmm. Um, So that really helped me out. That put me in the fight team. That put me on their socials. They have a photographer walking around all the time. That really helped boost me. Did you Um, reach out to Tiger? Did you reach out to Tiger? Yeah. 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 At Tiger, they have a a, like a photographer just walking around basically um, most of the time when we're training and whatnot. And, And that was obviously helping me with content. And then from there, the manager was just like the last piece of the puzzle and um, it all kind of worked out. And then obviously networking with the guys over there, like you meet people from all walks of life and from everywhere in the globe. So you can kind of connect, create relationships and then um, use each other, I guess, for, for certain benefits. Like if they come to Australia, of course, we can link them in with certain opportunities and vice versa. Like as soon as I got an opportunity, I think to go to, I was going to Vegas um, for the contender series and um, one of the guys was like, oh, you can train at um, Extreme Couture, Mm -hmm. Um, just let them know that I sent you. And then obviously I trained at Syndicate and yeah, it was just like one of those things I really wanted to work on that. Like I'm, I'm pretty good at networking and speaking to people. So for that reason, um, I was like, you might as well use that and, and really work on that elevating your brand. And how important has been elevating your brand to getting the opportunities that you've gotten since oh, that point. like absolute tenfold even when even when I had like 2,000 3,000 followers just the I think other people recognize the approach that I was taking they recognize that like even from I remember back when I made my Instagram I knew that my username Janae Harding I wanted to keep it as authentic to myself because I knew one day 
that Janae Harding is going to be a brand that people are going to recognize all over the globe. So nice. it's just like making those little decisions, your layout, your like what works, like what, like reading little articles about social media and that kind yeah. of thing. And therefore what's going to perform better. And like, as much as I didn't really know what I was doing and I learned on the job, all these things really, I noticed now, like they got recognized as I was like, when I was meeting up with my manager, there was also a couple of other managers there. Mm -hmm. Um, it was a UFC event in Singapore. And for that reason, I think they could, they could kind of see what I was trying to do and yeah. how seriously I was taking this from, from the minor, minor details to the bigger things. And for that reason, I think I got taken more seriously. And like, I even believe that, I don't know, a hundred percent, but when I was, I was meant to be on LinkedIn series, didn't work out my visa fell through. And then I started really pumping my socials and tagging Bellator and UFC and all these things that Bellator reached out to us. Yeah, and I yeah. think that's because of how I approached them because of these, like, just yeah. like, because you got to put yourself out there and you've got to network yourself. I mean, it's an individual sport and you really have to make these proactive moves. And for that reason, they, cause, cause I had Danny in my bio, they would have contacted him and then he would have contacted me and then we established a contract. And then from there on, and for, like, I got a great contract from the get go. I've been treated great from the get-go. I've been promoted well. All of these things, I think, really come off me taking my brand seriously and therefore other people have no choice sure. but to. I know Sally wants to say something, but just lastly, just lastly, what would you say to those fighters who say, nah, man, I'm just going to I'm just gonna fight. I'm just going to work on my skills and let my fighting do the talking. I, I, ain't, I ain't into social media. I don't want to post and this and that. What do you say to those guys? I have these conversations often, <laughs> even with people who don't want to manage up. Yep. And I'm like, man, I understand. Like, I understand that the business side of things is intimidating. It's time consuming and it's, it's, it's a lot of work. Like, and not everyone gets it right. And I'm not saying that everyone will kind of be as visually understanding as I know that I am. Like I'm very good at aesthetics and I can make my own graphics and I can, figure stuff out and I'm very good at teaching myself and I don't think everyone's gifted with that which is fair enough but I really don't think I don't think that you need masses amounts of skills to put yourself out there and to take things seriously um do brand collaborations or all those kind of things like I know there's people with 3,000 followers or so getting brand collaboration opportunities mm -hmm. and that's fantastic but it just goes to show that sometimes sometimes it's not even about visual aesthetics it's about you're an MMA fighter in a niche market. We're in Australia, so we're very far away from the rest of the world. We need to make these small little adjustments to be able to adapt to the fact that we are so isolated. And hopefully, like, I don't, I personally think that everyone kind of going about it sometimes thinks that talking shit or, mm -hmm. or making noise in a, like a bad attention is how they get the recognition or how they're going to get, like, I guess the UFC call-ups and stuff. But I really don't think that's it. I think it's just taking your brand seriously, being serious about your career, that really translates on things like social media and, and with brands like, I guess, Boast that will then therefore recognize it, go see me and then and then continue on with that relationship because they personally want to. Like I just recently did some stuff with Disney um, mm -hmm. in the Mulan right. um, yeah. premiere, which was Crazy. fantastic. But they again, they approached me. I, I, I personally don't think my Instagram is like the best because – <coughs> I like don't have, I guess like an, a DSLR camera and I don't have like certain things that are always consistent, but <coughs> they can notice that I take my brand seriously. I'm representing a certain theme consistently for the last few years. And that's, that's how they're going to kind of take me seriously from that. <coughs> yeah, it's de you're right. I definitely think um, more than anything, I had never met you, but Miles had told me about you, and I was the exact same way. So I admittedly came from a business background that was looking <coughs> at wanting combat to be the best brand position with the best people. Um, fighting was one aspect of it. Obviously, you want people that are doing well, but the second aspect of it was people that you could tell took time and took care in terms of what they were doing. And as you said before, you don't have to be the best at it, but obviously you showed 
the level of respect to um, understand it and research it and study it more than anything. Like no one's mm. saying to be it a fighter <coughs> or be, be it anyone in any profession that you have to know everything. But if you took mm. the time to understand it, it gives you a, a level of understanding when you sit at the table with other people to say, hey, this is what I'm doing, this is what I've learned and this is how I'm trying to extend not only my personal brand forward but if i'm connected to your brand how i can extend your brand forward because everything's a partnership and i feel so many times a lot of fighters a lot of athletes in general because i came from a football background see the partnership obviously going in one direction which is their direction because they're the person that has the ball or scores the tries but there is a business behind you that is pushing you forward maybe a promoter, maybe management, maybe an organisation that has taken the time and respects you enough to put their resources, time, money, effort, whatever it is behind you. And if you're not respecting them by doing the very best you can within your own brand to push that forward, they're probably not going to want to work with you anymore. It, it will be a one one and done type of thing, whereas I see obviously brands we're both connected to like RBCA, constantly wanting to work with you. I see the stuff you're doing with Disney recently. And th these are big brands. These are big mm. international yeah. brands. And Even I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> but oh. it's definitely, and we're, we're mates with DT, so I'm sure he's not going to mind us saying that. I can 100% say it's not because your record, it's spotless. Like you're going out there and starching everyone in the first round and you've got yeah. all this crazy hype as the next champion of this he likes to work with you the same way we like to work with you because we know you're professional we know you take the time to look into everyone's product be it rbcas or our product and understand it and we know that you'll always represent it the best way possible for the business not just about yourself which a lot of people don't do most people don't do to be honest which yeah. is why it's always so refreshing to work with you and others like you and why I think people can take a lot of lessons out of what you've said. I think I agree. And this, this is well, like, you know, that we believe in this stuff a lot. Um, and we believe in yeah. this sort of like, um, you, you need to work with everyone and everyone helps everyone's journey succeed. And you were talking before about how you reached out or you, you, you got an opportunity with Tiger, you know, you have a, a manager that's supporting you. You had some people taking some photos to help you, get content for your social media. You were talking to someone who had experience in social media. She was giving you value and giving her you insights into what you should be doing. Um, you know, even small things like getting some, you know, products from combat, getting some products from Ruka, um, getting these deals with Bose. It's all helping you. It's helping us. It's helping everything. And it's a collaborative effort as much as we all say it's an individual sport it is a collaborative effort to get someone to be an Israel Adesanya or an Alex Volkanovsky or a Janae Harding. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think yeah. people people don't reverse engineer that enough or respect the, you know, um, how important that is. And I think that that's something that you've definitely taken from the start. 100%. And I also think that people don't, people don't stick with their ethics, like whatever it is that you believe in, like no matter where you end up on this little journey, there'll be heaps of twists and turns. But like, like we say, I mean, combat is a brand that obviously I've been friends with miles for a very long time. And now I'm friends with you. So, yeah. and I have that personal aspect, but at the same time, I would not back your guys product if I didn't believe in it. Mm -hmm. Like it just, it's just how it is. Like I, but I have that health food background. I understand the, nutrition kind of things I side of things and I understand like the ingredients and for that reason I genuinely love the products and therefore I genuinely want to push it because I think on social media and like even now looking into this whole twitch thing you can't fake your personality you yeah. can't 24 7 you can't fake your personality I mean there's so many people even the high level guys that I see and you're like yeah that's fake like that's not you you can see from a I guess a real perspective maybe the casuals can't see it but most of the people can and therefore brands and business minded people can see through these fake kind of things. Ruka is a brand that I have constantly wanted to work with like a very long time. And it just so happened to be linked in through my work, um, working at MMA fight store and therefore like things come in. And again, it's like the universe and navigating things, but it's also all these little 
details that I've made throughout my journey that will then therefore give me the resume that I have today, give me the social media that I have today, and people can therefore recognize and reflect from that. And it's like, I don't think people realize that there is enough success and enough brands for everyone in the world. Like there is enough success for everyone. Mm-hmm. And therefore, all these little decisions, and I may work with both, and that's fantastic if someone comes up and asks me, what happened with both? What would you do and not do? What, like, how did you get in there? And how did you, like, what were the things you learn? 100% I would sit down and talk to them. Even in messages, I have people messaging me. Do you have a manager that organized that stuff? No, I did it all myself because yeah. I honestly was navigating this stuff as much as you guys are navigating it. Mm-hmm. But since I've learned the lessons, I'm having to pass it on to you. It may not be both, maybe Beats, maybe another brand, another headphone brand. Who cares? There's 5 million brands in the world that we can all do a commercial. Mm-hmm. We can all make money off it and we can all get paid. Like, yeah. And that's what matters. And then it comes back to those people that have been in your corner from the get-go. Mm-hmm. And I think like keeping ethics keeping sticking to your guns and like and being a good person will always be that underlining factor yep. and that will always translating that's why dt and the guys at ruka love those guys can always have a conversation you guys can always have a conversation with you guys love your brand as well that's just an extra additive but it's like it, that's because i don't change who i am when it comes to each business meeting even going to post i am i'm a fish out of water in that like there's directors and people everywhere and i've got no idea what i'm doing there's makeup people obviously i don't wear a lot of makeup like <laughs> all these things are like super i'm um, like super foreign to me but because i'm a good person because i'm like somewhat like i guess kind to everyone that i speak to that translates and therefore they want to work with you more like i think people really neglect the underlying fact that stick with your ethics and be a good person will pen it like push you forward no matter where you are, like no matter where you are. If you're maybe now working with like a Tesla or something, you're going to therefore, if you're a good person, they're going to keep wanting to work with you because you're not a headache to work with. Like it's just common sense. And it's like, I think like my Instagram, I've always navigated my Instagram as in everything that I post, think of the younger generations that are looking at it. Think of what my mom like me to post this. Would like, who's watching and what am I saying? What am I influencing? Even like I'm a weed advocate, but I don't always push it on Instagram because it's not for everyone. And I don't want to pressure the younger generations to think that to become successful, you need to also smoke weed. Like it's not a thing. But for those people that are understanding, I can have intellectual conversation with them about it. And that's that's another side. I think a lot of people forget that there is like once you have 10, 20,000 followers, there is so many more people watching and so many more people um sensitive to all these little messages that you're conveying and if i put my ass on instagram every day and i show that's how you have to be successful then i'm working against everything that i've worked for personally and then also i'm working against that idea that no matter who you are no matter what walks of life whether you're comfortable with your body uncomfortable with your body whatever it is you can still be successful like it doesn't all have to be based when we talk about branding it doesn't have to be branding that um you've sold your soul for Mm -hmm. like it can just still be authentic you and you're still gonna get a following off it like it's still gonna work such a good role model and i love having these chats with you because it's a different sort of context having these chats and so i get to learn more about you um compared to sitting on the side of the mats and just bantering or whatever and it makes me even more proud to have you in our lives and obviously representing our brand so we really appreciate that i think it's incredible um keep doing what you're doing that's the main thing um yeah 100 percent. and i don't have it all figured out too like i'm like and like as i'm saying this like like i'm literally saying i'm working these things out as i go like this boast thing this disney thing like i said i'm surprised that these brands are working with me but at the same time i earned it and but at the same time i also have no idea what i'm doing like i'm i'm asking questions i'm pestering the people i've literally the woman, uh, there's a company that organizes the production. I don't really know how it works still, but I just have a whole lot of business people that call me and whatever. <laughs> um, but that lady in herself, since I established a good relationship with her, I was kind to everyone. I was bubbly, whatever. She went out of her way. She was like, okay, they want to do more for you, with you, sorry. And um, do you want me to sit on a conversation or do you want to call them and then call me straight after with any questions? She was like, I know you're really green with this stuff. So do you need help? And I was like, you're not getting paid to do this. Like this is a hundred percent out of the kindness of your own heart. 
But for that reason, people can see how much I want to learn. They can see that I'm happy to admit that I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm happy to say, okay, how do you like your invoices to be set out? Mm -hmm. What do I need to do here? Like all these little like details and stuff, you never have it figured out. But just like as long as you put 100% into it and you're willing to learn and willing to put your ego aside every now and again, then you can't help but be successful and you can't help but move forward. I really, really think that a lot of people think that all these people that are listening on podcasts have everything figured out. Never, ever, ever, ever. No one, does. No one has anything no one. figured out. No, one. Everyone, no. But like Even you said, four fights in Bellator, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> where am I? <laughs> Every time I get there, I'm like, can someone tell me where to go? <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> I think that's the most important lesson that we've sort of shared today. No one knows what's yeah. no one knows what's going oh. on. As long as you're just and taking ask. forward steps, creating some momentum and just being a good person, yeah. then things will start to fall into place. Definitely. True. And ah, some people will yeah. be snobby and some people will be spiteful and, and probably won't want you to succeed. But people like me specifically, people like you guys that are approachable, happy to let anyone know what the formula they have. Yep. And then even yep. if that person doesn't use it but takes one small piece out of it, mm-hmm. everyone has – there's enough success in the world for everyone to be successful. 100%. I think a big part of your success, although it may not be attributed to it, was the fact that you did work so hard away from the gym prior to – and while still at the gym, and the first time I met you, you were still working, I felt like – it felt like full time at MMA Fight Store because I was always yeah. talking to you well, on that on that email. That yeah, so I don't. I think a big part of that success was the fact you dealt with a lot of adversity, both in a workplace, um, dealing with businesses, dealing with other people, dealing with fellow staff members. A lot of people are sheltered from that or in a bubble from it that are uh, that because they're like, I'm a fighter, I'm a this, and that's the box that they put themselves in and they don't touch or interact with anyone else. Whereas you obviously were working extremely hard outside of that. So you got a lot of experience and gained a lot of skills and problem solving skills that a lot of people otherwise wouldn't have got. Mm -hmm. And you can tell because you're easily one of the easiest people we have to work with because you understand a process Mm -hmm. and you can appreciate a process of what goes into things where a lot of people don't have that insight because through no fault of their own, but they've just put themselves in a bubble to say, I'm here, and they don't get to experience any of the stuff that you've experienced. You, you appreciate stuff, though. That's the biggest thing. And You grew up yeah. with a single mum, yeah? Yeah. Uh, that has to come from, from that. You saw the struggles that 100%. your mum went through lo- looking after you guys growing up, and you wanted to provide something better for yourself and then for your family moving forward. That has to, ha- to have a play in... Yeah you know, the decisions that you've made, you know, and the responsibility that you've, you know, taken on moving up in the world. Would you I agree? I think so too. And like you're saying, I think a lot of people underappreciate something as simple as retail or just as simple as a full-time job or hospitality or just working within an environment that is maybe lower than your obviously wanted profession. Mm-hmm. But they're all the little stepping stones that like invoicing purchase orders ordering like understanding like POU or SKU numbers like these little tiny things like as weird as it sounds have literally probably helped me more than algebra in school did yeah, like yeah. it's it's like these these life skills that I have adapted and and like you're saying I didn't have a fallback so therefore I was working full time like I didn't have a choice like we say did you have a plan b all the plan b's were on me like I love my mom and she's created an amazing life for me but now it's her time to look after herself so therefore I've maybe because I'm stubborn and maybe because I'm very independent almost too independent I've taken all the responsibility of my life onto me it's not I don't ask her for money ever I like even from a very young age I probably didn't unless I'm in dire straits which has happened over the last few years traveling and everything but like everything that I do as much as I traveled and I um I went and did all these crazy stuff it was all on me, like worst case scenario. Like if I run out of money in Thailand, I run out of money in Thailand. It wasn't like I can get mom to send me a couple of grand. She doesn't have a couple of grand to send. Yep. So it's sort of like I think taking responsibility for myself for one really put a little bit more pressure on me but at the same time made me um, very understanding that every decision that I was making was important um, and, and it can't just be kind of like, 
I'm going to do this because I feel like it's going to be like, how does this help my brand? How does this help my career? What are the benefits of making this decision? Um, I can't, can't, I didn't have any like leeway or any buffering room to make the decision based on, I guess, just enjoyment in a sense. Um, and for that reason, like when I came back to Australia, as much as I had already been signed to Bellator, I'd already have maybe, I think, two fights in Bellator. I still had to come back and work full time because I had to make all that money back of, of traveling and, and, and work. And I had to get myself back up to the place I am now. And I'm happily living in my little house and, and that kind of thing. But I was living out of a bag for like maybe two, three years. Yep. Um, but that was on me. And that all these responsibility and all these decisions, all the negatives, all of it was on me. And I took responsibility for it. And I think in turn, that really made a big difference into what I appreciate now, working with Disney, working with Post, getting these paychecks that I didn't think, I didn't even know that I could get really. Yep. I appreciate them so much more now and I appreciate the following on my Instagram and I appreciate all these little tiny things because these are all things that, um, that I've worked so long for. And I remember when I was maybe not doing so well, when I was traveling and stuff that I envisioned happening later on. And, and so I put the things in place and I made the decisions and I did the stuff to get where I am now. And I think it's super rewarding when you do it yourself. Um, it is a little bit harder and of course reach out when you can, but, but I don't think people understand how rewarding it is to work hard and then get reap the rewards of those things. You just bought yourself a Harley. Is that right? I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. That's Even crazy. I forgot about that. Yeah. That's true for my birthday. I mean, so, man, like I, like this time last year, 100%, I couldn't even afford a car. Yeah. And, um, and then my car broke down maybe a three, few months after I bought it which was after that last fight and um, oh no, just before that last fight. And now I'm buying, I've got two cars. One doesn't work, but I've got two cars and a Harley and I'm like, wow, like, and I can afford rent by myself. I can, I'm comfortable. I've got two beautiful little cats running around and I can make sure that they get the best food possible. It's those little things that like, I think now, like I spend my money on stuff that I know I'm gonna like get the most out of like, I bought that bike and anyone that knows me knows that I've wanted a bike for a very long time, like very long time. Basically ever since I came back from Thailand, I had a bike in Thailand and I've really, 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 really wanted it. And I got my license um, at the start of the year. And so I was like, man, like I've worked really fucking hard to get here. And I got the paycheck from both. And I was like, well, I'm going to spend not all of it, but I'm going to spend some of it on a bike. And it's a secondhand bike still. I'm going to look after it, I'm going to insure it and all these like little things. It's a sensible way about it, but it's the most impulse buy thing I've done in like <laughs> literally you. my adulthood life. That's so awesome. I'm, it's like, it's, it's so like so rewarding to be, be at this point finally and, and coming to see things doing a full circle and you never know, like maybe in a couple of years I will risk some more stuff and, and go traveling again and maybe move to the States or I don't know what, what happens in life. And maybe I will have another time where I'm, walking the streets trying to pawn off a gold necklace to make money yeah. to have food <laughs> but it is what it is like I, I'm not a victim of this stuff I, every single decision I made have put me into those bad bad places yeah. I guess you can say is bad but at the same time I've learned something off everything it's not it's nothing's negative like I can't everything on my journey nothing's negative mm. you were saying um obviously you know you who knows what's going to happen in the future. You might move to the States. You were saying that during COVID, this is the first time you've really been sort of grounded in one place for so long. Not in place. Yeah. yeah. And um, what it looks like from from where we sit is you found what seems to be an awesome team at King's MMA. And um, it's awesome to see you working with a core group of, of girls there who look super elite. Um, my friend Olivia, who I went to school with, grew up with as well. She only told me that the other crazy. day. I yeah. was like, you're holding out on me, not telling me that you yeah. went to school with Miles? Are yeah. you being serious? It's awesome, She man. grew up on the Gold Coast? Yeah. I was like, what? Yeah, That's and she's got a brown belt now and she's obviously making her way up, which is it's just crazy to think where she is now compared to the Olivia that I knew back in the day. But it's <laughs> awesome. It's so cool. Um, and, it's, and that facility just looks outrageous. It looks world-class. Yeah. How's, how, how's that camp been for you or how's that sort of team worked out for you? Has it been sort of something that you feel like you could stay there for a little while at least and, and grow there? 100%. It was like when I got to Sydney, that was really – that's all I wanted. I wanted just one gym that I felt at home, I felt comfortable. I basically had as much stuff as possible under the one roof. It's never possible to get everything, but mm. 
as much as I could, I wanted everything that I could get under the one roof. Similar to that Puma vibe, similar to the original days where I was at Puma. And I guess even Tiger, like I had everything in that one roof. I had everyone together. But the only difference at Tiger is I never had consistent training partners because mm -hmm. people come and go from Thailand. It's phase or it's maybe a camp or whatever it is. And so like the only real positive out of COVID was that like a lot of my gyms closed, um, obviously only temporarily and then opened up and then some closed um, ongoing and indefinitely and so for that reason everything changed I had to change all my usual schedule and I had to start really branching out and um, luckily enough I worked with a few girls um, in Penrith at Zoo with Arlene because yep. obviously I would go kind of wherever Arlene is I'd, I'd be able to even if it was like an hour travel it was definitely worth it getting the rounds in and she'd established like a really good girls group and then from there on we had like a, a group chat and then the group chat had more girls and then um, I got invited to Kings and basically like the first time I went there for sparring, I was just going for Saturday sparrings. Um, I was like, man, this place is one phenomenal facilities. There's a full size cage, full size ring. There's mass amounts of matted area. There's a mezzanine area with more mat areas for like warming up. Mm -hmm. um, then there's a hot yoga room. There's a hyperbaric chamber. There's a yeah, wow. sauna, like like and there's snacks and you know like just those right. little details that i don't think anyone like in australia has as much experience as elvis that he had really gone overseas to a lot of even in the states and a lot of different gyms um to kind of take these little i guess ideas and pull them out and make it their own and then on top of that he's very brand minded and um visual as mm. well so he knew that that king's emblem king is Looks obviously cool. his mm, yeah. fight name yeah yellow and black and it's everywhere and it just looks consistent. He has, um, he specifically takes photos and there's some other guys that take photos. They're all very minded about the whole gym culture. And then on top of that, creating a brand and creating a facility. And I'm sure he would have put a lot of money into that place. Oh, yeah. um, and as much as they get members, like it's no, but you guys know you're oh, a gym. It's not, not rewarding from yeah. the get go. He's like doing putting it for all the that love. money into yeah. somewhere. Yeah. He's he just loves <laughs> for it. For a very long time. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like, man, like I walked in there, I was like, why would I go anywhere else? Like, um, there's, and like you're saying, on top of that, there's a whole lot of consistent people that also have that same mentality and also have loyalty to their brand and their coach. And, mm -hmm. and for that reason, like, um, it's just, that's probably been the best thing to come out of COVID, um, to really have a home now that I, that I don't even want to leave. Like, you know, sometimes you go to a gym and you do your session and it's great, but you want to, you want to dip out as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, this is one of those places that the classes finish at nine, nine thirty. We're still there till like ten, talking shit yeah. about like whatever current <laughs> current affair is going on. And it's like that mentality is what I've been searching for since I left Puma. That's and um, I'm so 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 grateful to have found it. Well, dude, cells um cells got to duck off to another meeting soon, <laughs> <laughs> but we might right. sort of um no, yeah. no it's it's all it's all, all it's all timed perfectly. Yeah. Um, it's been so amazing to talk to you. Um, what's what's next for you? Um, are, are you sort of looking for the next sort of fight? Are you, are you are the things in talks? What what what's what's next? Yeah, yeah, we are definitely in talks. Um, I was originally matched up for October third, so I should have been in Italy right now, um, getting to go over there um, because obviously they want to keep everything under wraps just with COVID and everything. Yeah. Everything's very uncertain. Um, and I was matched up with an opponent that I've been trying to fight for a little while, um, Olga Rubin, and we both very respectfully um, have a good relationship to kind of, I guess, on just social media and that just to, to mutually agree. And yep. um, we were matched up, but unfortunately she had some visa issues. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, we've been trying to um, get on a different show and just and just get a different opponent if, um, if she maybe can't get her U.S. visa. Yep. Um, with obviously COVID and everything is hard, I mean, I'm lucky that I got my US visa through correspondence. I didn't have to go to the consulate. So obviously all that kind of stuff is a big, big hiccup. Um, people kind of don't realize that it's not just about getting matched up, yeah. getting flights over there, especially now. Yeah. It's about, yeah, sure. sorting out your visas, sorting out your quarantine, sorting out all that sort of stuff. Um, and so hopefully I'm just waiting. I'm just really like kind of sitting on the back burner right now. But at the same time, the positive is that I was in camp. I'm still kind of keeping that energy I'm a little bit sick at the moment, but other than that, I'm kind of keeping that energy moving forward and 
the other positive is that this is probably the first time since being signed to Bellator that I'm not relying on that money coming in. That's so awesome. for that yeah. reason, I'm not in any major rush to take up any silly fights and, and just do whatever they say because um, I really don't have to. So so I'm, I'm happy to kind of wait and, and see what happens and, and keep making the right decisions to move towards that title because as much as I've been working on the, all this other stuff, the underlying goal will never change of, of that World Championship gold. So, Amazing. so awesome. we're just trying to make the right decisions and – move forward and do it right with my my dodgy record so i really don't want to make those decisions anymore i just want to just want to go forward and 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 only do what's going to benefit me incredible awesome man. congrats to you janae yeah doing appreciate, such a good job appreciate everything appreciate the appreciate everything yeah all the best and we'll keep in close contact can't wait to, to train with you and Aiden when you uh, yes. can either come up or we Hopefully come down in a again. couple of weeks borders amazing open, it's looking like it yeah so. I'll definitely be heading up. Yeah, um, awesome. at least to come see Mama. Epic. Yeah. And say hello. Cool. All right. Awesome. Chat soon. Thank you guys see so much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Bye.